one. What is up, YouTube? HBJ here, and I'm coming at you guys with a retro deck profile. So this is going to be a very unique one because retro deck profiles, I said we're going to be based off of decks and stuff, you know, in the series. Well, this is definitely one to start off the series like no other. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first TCG starter deck. This is starter deck UG. It's an amalgamation of cards from Gimoto's, you know, journeys as a duelist. It is not all of them, but it is the ones that started Yugi's journey off. And what I mean by that is that, as you can see here, there are a lot of cards that Yugi played. There are some cards Yugi didn't play. There are some cards here that were basically created because they needed some slack in that, and there are a lot of issues um, trying to give Yugi Moto some support cards for a shot there, because at this time, the game had just started. There really wasn't much out there. People were trying to build decks off of things. So, you know how it is, you know? Most of them probably didn't think, oh, let me buy three structure decks, then I can have some really good, you know, defense or some really good startups or some really good setups. Because why? We were young, we were kids hyped up on sugar, and sitting there watching our favorite anime. I know a lot of people whose favorite anime is actually Yu Gi Oh! So, yeah, this is just how it started for us here in the TV. This starter deck came out March 29th of 2002, alongside of starter deck Kaiba. So these so these structure decks are legitimately 20 years old. I cannot believe it. Pretty much the year probably like, what? They're tw no, actually they're going to be 22 years old. I'm sorry. But yeah, these things are over 20 years old because the first two starter decks in the series. And I, I'm, yeah, I'm just distracting most people because most of this belongs in a uh, Legend of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, which was the first uh, pack for the Yu-Gi-Oh! So. But then here we are looking at the first structure, this first starter deck. The structure deck didn't start until later on, because we didn't get this first starter deck. I mean, structure deck. Um, so I want to say that is Zombies Madness uh, and Dragon's Roar in TCG, OCG. So, yeah, definitely a lot of these here. But uh, while we go ahead and we take a look at what is the Starter deck Yugi. So we have the Dark Magician, Guide of Fierce Knight, Summon Skull, Curse of Dragon, and it's not too. Doma, the Angel of Silence, Neo, the Mystic Swordsman, Manny, Treasure Chest, Great White, Baron, the Fiend Sword, uh, Mystic Clown, Sorcerer of the Doom, Ancient Elf, Witty Phantom, Winged Dragon, Guardian of Fortress One, Celtic Guardian, Feral Imp, Mystic oh, Ghost, Beaver Warrior, Mystic Elf, uh, was this Dragon Zombie, Ga uh, Giant Soldier of Stone, Mammoth Graveyard, Silver Fang, Claw Reacher, The Stern Mystic, Wall of Illusion, Trap Master, and Your Bug, for the spells, Trap, uh, Change of Heart, Despell, Move Trap, Dark Hole, Fissure, Soul Exchange, Cards Destruction, Monster Reborn, um, Don Quixote the Cure Master, Last Will, Sword of the Dark, Sword of Dark Destruction, Spell, of, I mean, Book of Secret Arts, Yami, and then for the child cards, we have Trap Hole, Wabaku, Reinforcements, Castle Walls, First Trap, Two Prong Attack, Dragon Capture Jar, and Ultimate Offering. So yeah, there is a total of 50 cards in this structure deck. I couldn't believe it myself when I took a look at it. I was like, wait a minute, 50? These things had 50 cards? Why? And you can basically see it. They really tried to accumulate the nostalgic setup of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series by having a lot of Yu-Gi's iconic monsters in it, but also trying to fill in the fluff. They did correct this, you know, later on, like just giving the 40 cards and then Whatever cards we needed for the side or the extra deck, you know, they gave us two, but they clearly were like, this is what's for the main deck. These cards are for the extra deck, as it's now called. And then just all the cumulative things that you need. So you'd have like three Prince of Staples, which there are pretty much many of. And you'd have your boss monster, your ace card, and a lot of your support stuff. What a starter deck here is basically just the typical here are the cards to support your deck or support your gameplay. And most of them are probably expensive as hell because stuff like Monster Reborn, Trap Hole, and, and the like 
were very high rarity. You had to pull tons of stuff for them up until their limitations and stuff back then. Because I believe the cards here that you see, um, in terms of spells, because none of the monsters are banned, by the way. All these monsters are free. The crazy thing is all the spells here, for the most part, have been affected. Um, Change of Heart is at 1, Dark Hole is at 3, but it used to be at 1, and then the point it used to be banned. Fissure used to be at 1, um, Card Destruction used to be at 1, Monster Reborn used to be at 1, then banned, then came back at 1 again, then banned, then came back again. Last Will is one of the first of many cards to on the limited list, then eventually being banned, because this card is extremely broken. Uh, for those who don't know what Last Will does, Last Will's effect is that whenever a card that you have would be sent to the gra would be sent to the graveyard, um, I believe it's by a yeah. If a monster on your side of the field is sent to the graveyard this turn, you can just summon one monster with an attack of fifteen hundred or less from your deck once this once during this turn, um, and then shuffle your deck. So basically, what this did was that if your monster you know was Summon from the field to the graveyard, then you are able to start to summon another monster from your deck with the two left. This card right here created so many different things called an FDK that it was just ridiculous how abusable it was. And it's only really abusable because of the fact that later on, there were cards that um, allowed it to become abusable. Uh, like, for instance, uh, Everyone knows Magical Scientist FTK OTK. Why was it like that? Well, because Magical Scientist's ability was that you can pay 800 of your life point, and then, um, no, it was 1,000 of your life point. Then you were able to um, summon a fusion monster from your fusion deck, because it was called Fusion Deck at the time. And you would also use part of Last Will in combination to basically send off your monsters. Um, to get Catapult Turtle, Magical Scientist, and then you would start popping off monsters on the board. Because both of the monsters, Magical Scientist and Catapult Turtle, have very low stats. You could easily take advantage of them. This is one of the reasons why Cyberstein got banned as well, because it's just way to keep monsters out of the extra deck instead of actually using you know, the cards that were needed for the summon. So with Magical Scientist, you are able to do one of two things. You're able to Excuse me, Excuse me, I'm very You take your fusion monsters, send them to the grave with the catapult turtles effect, um, off the magical scientist, and then burn your opponent for the damage uh, that you would do. You basically do this to accumulate enough points of damage, then you just send out the turtle and you send out the magical scientist for the remaining amount. Yes, it sounds very risky, but a lot of people actually did it. And there are even ways to. Uh, to take advantage of the situation themselves and try to, you know, win off of it. Because that was why it's called Magical Scientist FTKOT game. Because either you're Magical Scientist and help you summon all these big beat sticks, or you were using Magical Scientist to summon all these monsters so you can last well and then pop things off. This is how it goes. And a lot of very defensive spells and traps in here as well, with stuff like Dark Hole to clear your opponent's monsters, Monster Reborn to bring back monsters from the grave. Uh, soul exchange, even though at the sacrifice of your battle phase, you're able to tribute off your opponent's monsters. You said it. You know it's crazy, though, because soul exchange was actually a card that was used by Kaiba and not by Yugi. I've never known Yugi to actually use soul exchange. Honestly, I am thinking of all the times that I could think of it and no. The only time we ever see it used is from Seto Kaiba, and he uses it to take Valkyrie on the Magnet Warrior. Tribute it apart to take its pieces of Gamma, Magna, Va Gamma, Beta, and Alpha. Tribute them off to summon Hot Ballista Tormentor, and then wreck them with a number of ships. Then we have Change of Heart, yeah, another OG Yu-Gi-Oh card. Um, that's back at one right now. And the thing about Change of Heart is that you can steal your opponent's roster regardless of its position, and use it for whatever you want. This is the precursor to Brain Control. Precursor to mind control, all those cards that were able to take an opponent's roster. Have a change of heart. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, then we have spell and trap removal, and God knows the most weakest way of spell and trap removal. He spell and remove trap. It was later on that we got stuff like MSP, Heavy Storm, Guard. He didn't have those. 
This is what you're using. It's funny though because a lot of times sponge hot removal can come from various things in the current in current game. But you know, OG style, OG, you know, you your players and stuff. <laughs> this is what we did. You know, then we got our, our heavy spelling trap removal because we didn't get Duster till um worldwide edition. We didn't get heavy storm in them until I wanna say between Rhino Guardian to Labyrinth of Nightmare. So, it, no, Feral Servant to Labyrinth of Nightmare. So, yeah, a lot of spelling trap removal was definitely scarce. Um, you know, and it's crazy thing is that with um, Remove Trap, the trap has to already be active. So, Remove Trap basically only really works on continuous trap cards, or trap cards that were like, you know, with chain that equip themselves to a monster. Um, these spell, on the other hand, was just a way to see what self impact your opponent had. And if I quit, I quit. If you, excuse me. If you needed to. Because otherwise, you would just start coal and get rid of the field. Um, you didn't have too many staples. I'm not gonna lie, you didn't have too many staples back then. And Yugi's monster lineup, um, you know, as I kind of guess it is, there's a lot of things in here that I'm sure a lot of people would not use. A lot of people would have swapped out things. If you're really like three sets of deck off of a Yugi starter deck, I would say you'd be using maybe three copies of Summon Skull, three copies of Neo, the Mystic Swords Wind, three, three copies of Dragon Soldier Stone, Mystic Elf. Some other beaters would probably be, what is it, that guy right there, the. Uh, <laughs> Maybe even plant, or maybe even chest. Um, maybe Kali rocks some feral imps and stuff. Um, God, I don't know how you work with the staples because you probably have to find maybe, you know, some type of compromise of a ban list to be like, okay, these cards should be can So that's probably what the big thing would be. Yeah. Then on top of that, you'd have to. The Yager spell trap removal. Yager monster removal with cards like Trap Hole, uh, which single target, but it's perfectly fine. Um, play around the shenanigans with stuff like two prong attack. You use the ultimate offering to bring more monsters onto the field and then play the two prong to blow up. So while you're sacrificing two of your own, your opponent screws the game off. That's when you're very big to But we highly recommend it. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, there's just so much to like unravel with this. It really is. It's just looking at it, it's just like, wow, this is this is this OG Yu Gi Oh player's path. The stuff we we you know we played, we seen, we had to use, and it wasn't till you know more aggressive packs came out that the starter deck support was really just like, okay, we know you're here, but what can you offer to what's currently out? right now and yeah it is crazy because when i talk about kaiba and joey and and pegasus we're going to go through those same things as well to see what those are because i believe pegasus is a starter deck i honestly have to say would be the starter deck that revolutionized things because it gave an official while it was a starter deck it had an official archetype in it and that official archetype of course is uh, tune while Joey's red eyes didn't really pop off till years later um, in stagnant stuff, kind of similar to how Blue Eyes and Dark Magician were as well, you could relatively say that while looking at a lot of the big support here, it is just a basic starter deck. And when you look at basic starter decks, even for you know our times now, it's like, yeah, you got all these reprints, which, yay, but the utility of things, the setup of things, you know, Getting things together. So classy, so set up, so just so so. Yeah, yeah, that is that is it. Um, what are the things to say about this? I mean, because it, it's not really much. This is you have a big majority of your normal monsters, whether they have high attack, high attack, or really good defense. Great tribute monsters to play around with. You know, like your summon skull, your dark magician. You have monster removal from your effect monsters, which let's just be real. Your effect monsters are very bland right now. So if that's the case, you just run off of what's in like in the blue eyes, and you're running off of Sensor Kaiba and Yugi. 
And it's not too many good effect monsters. We're just gonna keep that like that. But yeah, this is what they had to offer with it. And it's crazy because you have, you have decent stuff. You do, you really have decent stuff. But um yeah, I mean it's just not something I, I particularly would brag about, but it's something that I could honestly say I experienced. Actually no, I never experienced Joey or no, you getting kind of structure like I wanted Pegasus um structure that but could never get it because they were all sold out. There's going to be a reason why they're sold out, and I'll talk about it when I do talk about Pegasus starter deck. Um, and my experience with Joey's starter deck, which was a lot more. So, yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up this retro deck profile here. And if you guys like it, you know, leave a, a like, and maybe potentially I'll do some more. You know, I can go into structure decks if you guys will like. So, yeah, I'll definitely leave that um, in the community tab and see how people can enjoy it. So, with that said, thank you guys so much for watching um, this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel as it helps me out tremendously. Um, you can hit the notification bell to be informed of when I upload more content to the channel. Social, social media links, they are in the description box below. And definitely keep an eye out on things because, um, you know, I like to keep you guys updated. So thank you everybody for watching and HBJ is out. Here.